What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully, everybody's off to a wonderful Wednesday. We got some NBA to talk about. Uh, if the feed gets choppy at all, I got two kids trying to stream class stuff at home. So hopefully, my internet is able to handle the bandwidth on a situation like that. But outside of that, uh, I don't know if you fell asleep before that, but did you see the end of the Jazz Nuggets game? Yes, I did. I actually put it on in bed. Um, I, I saw the ending. Crazy ending. Great game. Uh, Sad that one of those teams had to lose. Yeah, great game, great series. And to have a three-pointer to win the game, circle the rim, and bounce out like that, I mean, it, it doesn't get much more dramatic than that. And that's what we all love as sports fans. So for me, it's funny. I was like, I was a commercial right before that, and I was flipping back and forth to the Indians game because I used some of them in fantasy. And there was something blocking my TV, like right where the score was. So I know Denver had 80 and Utah had 78. But I thought they had 80 when they got the last when they got that rebound. And then I saw that McConley missed the three. And I was like, oh, shit, this game's going to overtime. And then like 10 seconds later, I was like, oh, shit, this game's not going to overtime. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, man. We got a, another great game seven potentially tonight with uh, your Thunder taking on the Rockets this evening. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, guys. Uh, before we man. do, though, get over to oh, – what's that? I was going to say, it just just like came to my, my head when you mentioned the Rockets. This Rockets team, if you think about where they were two years ago, I remember how high you were on them to take out the Warriors when they had Chris Paul going into that series against Golden State. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. It's just crazy how time flies, you know? Yeah, people are so quick to change things up in the NBA that we've seen them go from Chris Paul to Russell Westbrook just to completely ditch Clint Capello, who I was a fan of. I thought he brought something to that team. But, hey, what are we going to do, guys? What we are going to do, though, I know that for a fact, is get our money in at Overlay Fantasy Sports. The name of the website is OverlayDFS.com. Guys, we've got MLB, NBA, NFL, and PGA contests up at your disposal. Uh, we don't talk golf. We had somebody comment on one of the YouTube videos, what are you guys going to do MMA and golf stuff? I don't know anything about either, and neither do you. So probably never. Uh, that doesn't mean these golf contests aren't up for you guys who love the sport. I know it's really popular on DK and FanDuel and things like that. So check it out on Overlay. We'll break down the NBA and MLB in a little bit. I'm excited to talk them all over. And we already dropped an NFL video, which is coming real quickly. Yeah, we will be covering esports before golf and MMA, I assume. Well, you already cover that esports a little bit, yeah. Yeah, LOL nerd. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we got uh, basically this is the same slate as two days ago. Prices are a little bit different. Uh, maybe it's potentially we could view the games a little bit differently since we got a game two and a game seven. Uh, I can't get out of my head, though, something that you brought up yesterday, which is like in the Raptors and Celtics game, because one's a game seven and one's a game two. And that keeps uh, keeps messing with me overnight. Um, you mean like in terms of in terms of what defensive what you th- intensity? Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, you saw it in the Nuggets jazz game yesterday. I mean. It was a, a defensive battle, and uh, you know, guys were a little bit off. You didn't see the monster games you had seen throughout the series. Uh, again, anything can happen, but I expect a similar Game 7 tonight. I do. Yes, I got you. Guys, day passes are up. Uh, NFL sales up. Subscribe to the station if you need to. A thumbs up is appreciated. Uh, let's start with one of the guys that, uh, to me, just makes a lot of sense. So I feel Goran Dragic right now a lot like I did Mike Conley from yesterday in that He's got a very, very solid floor. Like last night, I liked Conley a lot. He shot two of 13 and only missed like being a solid cash game play, like by a point or two while being completely off from the field. Because you're a floor general who is out there for most of the game, you have the ball in your hand a lot. It is just easy to run into points. And that's exactly how I feel Dragic tonight, who has been nothing from he's been good to great in every DFS game, you know, through five games of the playoffs so far. I see exactly the same at tonight. I think the Bucks will get Bledsoe back tonight. That's just my guess. Uh, he's a very nice defender at the point guard position, but he's probably not 100%, so it doesn't take me off Dragic in the slightest. And while I know some people might be of the thought or opinion that Milwaukee's going to play real hard today, like I look at Miami as being such a gritty team that on a two-game slate like this, this in no shape, way, or form is going to talk me out of drag. It's just being a solid play top to bottom. I mean, yeah, like, listen, I think my, I think Milwaukee wins this game, but I think anyone's silly if they're going to come on and say, like, Miami absolutely rolls here. I mean, that could happen because that's a, a possibility in any basketball game. But based on everything we've seen re- recently, it'd be surprising to see Milwaukee just, like, 
roll them here to the point where, you know, guys aren't good plays on the other team. So I'm with you 100% there. Dragic is like just a cog in the machine. You mentioned the slate is basically the same as a couple days ago. It is. The pricing is basically the same. He's only $300 more than he was a couple days ago. He is a lot like Conley, although in a lot of ways I feel like he's more needed. Very similar, though. Yeah, absolutely. I feel very safe with him that even if he's not great tonight by his standards, he's not going to show up with like 12 DK points, right? Like if he's bad, he'll get you 25 to 30, which you can overcome in playoff NBA. This isn't like the regular season. Yesterday, I think I said 270 will do damage tonight. I cashed really easily in double ups with like, I, I, I don't remember. It was like 251 or 252 or something, I think. I'd have to go back and look, but it's a low scoring format in the NBA and Dragic is 30 to 40 every single night kind of what I expect out of him again I feel very safe with him where there's other guys like I I don't have nearly the comfort I do with a Gordon Dragic I'm with you all right so we are going to double up on point guards today uh you were really big on Chris Paul the other day and he was you know he was good and I think it's a point that I touched on yesterday we brought it up on members only when we did that for today last night and I want to bring it up again if we were playing regular season NBA DFS last night and you looked at his 48.75, you'd be like, it wouldn't be great. It'd be good, but it would be nothing spectacular. In the playoffs, that is really, really good for what you can expect out of DFS scores. So if he does anything close to that tonight, that works for me. That works for me in all formats. Yeah, I mean, you got to love that he really did it just scoring. He had three steals, but that's not crazy to expect a few, a couple or a few steals from Paul. Put up 28 points, real-life points in that game. Was big time down the stretch. Man, all these bullet points, you know how much I like Chris Paul tonight. It's a huge game for his legacy. I mean, listen, this is his old team. He's obviously wanted to win this series. It's not like he wouldn't have wanted to win the series if it wasn't his old team. But this is about as big of a Game 7 in the first round as you could get. I mean, I can't imagine a bigger Game 7 in the first round between CP3 Westbrook, the Rockets, and Thunder. In a lot of ways, and I've heard people say this, and I'm interested to get your take, Houston has better players than the Thunder, but the Thunder are a better team. And a lot of that is because of Chris Paul. Game 7, I think this this spot is built for a guy like him. We talked about that we could see this game being more of a defensive battle, a slower-paced game. That fits Paul's game. I know I like him you know, slightly a bit more than you do here, but I know you're on board. There's just a lot to like here because we've talked about, you know, the, the second to last bullet point, you're not, you're not going to get 65-70 from anyone on the slate. Maybe Giannis, maybe Harden, but that's it. Even at their prices, though, and what they do to affect your salary cap, like you need, in my opinion, 60-plus out of either of those guys for it to be a good play because it forces you to play some, some junkier, crappier players. This is not the regular season where all of a sudden – you know, insert point guard for 3,500 playing for the the starter that isn't in there. Like, that just does not exist on this slate. Yeah, and honestly, like, I would be very surprised if anyone on the slate besides Arden or Giannis scored more than 60. Like, very surprised. Yeah, me too. All right, let's keep rolling down here. Uh, let's talk about another guy, um, kind of just – What's the best way to phrase this? PJ Tucker is just another guy that maybe we're not super, super excited about him and expect him to win as GPPs tonight. But when you're looking to build rosters this evening and you're starting to look for those guys below 5K that will help you, you know, offset the salary of higher priced players, like where else are you going besides PJ Tucker? Um, there's another guy that we talked about on members only. Like they're very, very and far between. Our next guy we're going to talk about is like more of a GPP flyer for cheap guys. But if you're looking for a dependability, a guy that you can trust to play minutes, to get run, to give you points, look at PJ Tucker at the center position. So you were bullish on him last game, and he had his best game of the series with 32.25 points. Uh, he also hasn't dropped below 18 and a half DK points in any game this series. And while 18 and a half on 4,500 is not a good day, it's again, it doesn't ruin your slate and kick you out of the money type the day in any stretch or way like you know you look at some other guys that have been out there on slates when you pay down for him they really 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 hurt you like if he has his worst game of the you know of the series even and goes for 15 points tonight you can still overcome that with the right plays and need cheap guys they just don't exist anywhere else no we've seen like basically the same rotation of cheap guys like throughout all these series you know whether it's like Royce O'Neal like uh at first, it was Tory Craig, Jeremy Grant. 
Like, of all those guys, Tucker is playing the best ball. Like, of all those guys, if they were all on a slate, I would use Tucker right now at 4,500. He plays massive minutes for Houston. That's the other thing. Of all those guys, he plays the most minutes because he plays a ton of minutes every game. He's not going to have high usage, but just him being out there is all that matters right now. And this goes back to the point you just made about, you know, insert $3,500 point guard here. There is none of that on this slate. To get a guy at 4,500 that plays like close to 40 minutes, I mean, give me that all day. So I was wondering, because Jeff Green was balling earlier this series, and when Westbrook came back, I figured they'd shift Gordon down to the three, run a lot of the three-guard set. But what was going to happen? Was this going to eat into Tucker, Green, Rocco? We've seen the, the pecking order of these guys now. And he played 20 more minutes than Jeff Green the other day. They clearly yeah. trust him more in a big game like this. Expect big minutes out of him. The only thing that takes him out of his big minutes, in my opinion, is if he headbutts somebody and gets ejected. Yeah, it really seems like now with Westbrook back, like the packing order is Tucker and Covington and then Green way down the list. Absolutely. All right. So these are all guys you can rely on for tonight. I wanted to get off the beaten path a little bit and made a little bit of a switcheroo in who we were going to talk about for this last one. So this is a guy that we talked about last night when we did members only for anybody. So the first three guys we talked about are all pretty common sense guys that are going to get love that you all know what you're talking about. I wanted to bring up uh, – Another guy from my Milwaukee Bucks where we could touch all four teams today and somebody that you could potentially look at as kind of a lower-owned guy in GPPs, uh, and that is Kyle Korver, uh, three-point assassin extraordinaire, one of the greatest three-point shooters that's ever walked the face of the earth. Now, this is a much riskier pick than the other guys we talked about because he has no lock for safe minutes. And with Eric Bledsoe playing today, that probably takes out 25, 30 potentially 35 minutes out of potential guards from the Milwaukee rotation. However... What we have seen Miami do throughout the regular season against the Bucs and, and, you know, through one game of the playoffs is literally mimic what Toronto did against them last year. Build that wall within the paint, leave open three-point shooters, especially secondary three-point shooters, because that's the way that they're going to want Milwaukee Bucks to beat them. Well, excuse me, the Bucs have some good shooters on the team. Marvin Williams, um, you know, Pat Connaughton. These guys can ring it from the outside. George Hill. However... None of them strike the fear in you the way that Kyle Korver does. You saw him out there for a decent number of minutes last game. He looked very aggressive when he got the ball. He was shooting the three. And while I'm not very excited about using him in a cash game or, like, let's say you play one big money GPP every day, I don't think I would get there. But for you guys who multi-enter and you're looking to catch lightning in a bottle, I don't expect Korver to get a ton of love tonight. And at 3100 this is a guy who actually gives you real extra money to spend in your salary cap. Well, yeah. So for me, it's more about that than Korver itself. So, yeah, if you're using him, you expect you are wanting him to play like similar to what he played last game and shoot a similar amount. I mean, you're not going to get too much more than that. But really, this comes down to like if you are like in love with the stars, you know, and want to play Arden or Giannis and then also have like a good roster around them. I mean, you're going to need a guy under 4K, at least one guy, you know. So there's other guys to look at, but there's no one safe, that's for sure. Corver's basically the minimum. We saw him be aggressive last time out. I mean, I certainly don't love it, but there's no one to love at 3,100. No, there is nobody to love at 3,100. It is <laughs> impossible to roster a $3,100 guy today and feel good about it uh, unless you're, you know, High on something you've been smoking all day. You're never going to feel good about anybody at 3,100 you roster today. Most of the 3,100 guys, a lot of them, I'll say, won't play today. So the fact that he he's not, like, guaranteed minutes, but he'll play some minutes here, you know, because he just will. Yeah, and the way that they're defending the Bucks, they may not have a lot of chance. Like, if Giannis is going to struggle to get into the lane, you even saw him be timid because he picked up foul trouble again. And when they got three guys in the lane like that, like this is the guy that is the best catch and shoot guy on the Milwaukee Bucks. I was hearing a lot of people talk about how Giannis, Giannis's confidence looked wavered, um, and it did. But I love Giannis today. Like people are too prisoner of the moment. I, I just really feel that way. You know, Giannis is the two-time MVP for a reason. I think he bounces back big time here. I think he's hearing all the outside noise. I don't disagree with you. My problem is. I am more afraid of him when he gets aggressive in this situation and they're playing as well as they're playing in Miami. He picks up these offensive fouls, which is his issue, and then that really kills his inability to get into the lane with reckless abandon. Like, yeah, you're not wrong. For me, like, and I, I like Miami a lot, and I think they're really good, but I also think the, the love for Miami might be a little bit overblown. 
people are, they're already, I mean, I know they're, they're up one game. They're already like favorites in this series against Milwaukee. People are treating them like they're the Clippers and the Lakers, and they're not that. Oh, no, they're not. Uh, this is the scariest matchup for the Bucks in the Eastern Conference. This yeah. is the team I thought we'd struggle most to get by. I feel really comfortable with how we can do it against the Boston Celtics they despite how though. well they're playing. But you got to get there, right? And it's no guarantee to get there. I think this, I think this series goes seven. Yeah, it might. And Boston also looks real good. And it might be a situation where, like, Boston can beat the Heat. The Heat can beat Milwaukee. Milwaukee can beat Boston, you know? Styles make fights. Yeah, And exactly. what Miami has... They have a closer in Butler. They have a point guard in Dragic who can get into the lane. They have shooters like Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero that can expose, you know, the weaknesses of Milwaukee. And they have the size and the length. They have guys like Crowder and Bam. And even Olenek you can bring in for a few minutes that can potentially give, you know, Giannis a little bit of a matchup problem. They also have the tenacity and they're well coached. Very well coached. They're very like, they're a typical Pat Riley team. They are, they play hard. And Bam is like... He's awesome. He still might be a little underrated. He brings so much versatility to them. Yeah, I, I love the, you know, I know Stephen A. and Max Kellerman always say that styles make fights, and this is the worst matchup Milwaukee can get in the Eastern Conference. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a great series. I think we're going seven. Um, it's gonna, I'm going to be nervous and pacing for the next week or so as we go through this whole thing, but uh, I'm, you know, it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to enjoy it. I'll give you that much. Yeah, I mean, I wish my team were here right now. For sure. I mean, it's difficult when you play these long season sports, whether it's, you know, baseball or basketball, when your team's not good to like really, really, you know, it's easy to enjoy the playoffs, but the stretch run of the season can just be, uh, it's so tough. If you're, you know, a baseball fan, and I've watched plenty of years the Brewers be terrible, and you're, you know, 60 and 95, like, what do you really care about the end of the season? That's why we've talked about this a lot. Like, even though the Indians haven't won a World Series, I'm appreciative. They've been competitive, like, pretty much year in and year out. There was definitely a gap when, you know, my, my, me and my friends refer to it as, like, the Michael Bourne, Nick Swisher era when the Indians were not good. But most of the time, they've been really good. And you take the Cavs, like, I'd obviously, you know, it's which would you rather have? The Cavs have been awful for a lot of my, you know, besides the 80s and stuff and the early 90s. They've been bad for a lot of my life. But then their peak was like amazing and it was so fun. But now it's like they're awful again. And it's like you just mentioned hard to it's difficult, you know, throughout the long regular season, as you just talked about. Well, in basketball, too, without like superstars, I mean, there's no end in sight for Cleveland to be good. Right. Like you like Sexton and you like a couple of the young players, but there's no real superstar that like gives you hope that, hey, we're going to be able to take out the Bucks, Raptors, Celtics and potentially the Nets next year. It depends what you mean by good, but you're 100% right. Like, there is no anywhere in sight that Cleveland's going to be a title contender anywhere soon. Because the NBA, we've talked about this, is built around superstars. Stars won't come to Cleveland. So, you know, we got very lucky with LeBron. But, I mean, look at Cleveland's history besides that. It's all you need to know. Well, and as a Milwaukee Bucks fan, we were lucky that we took a shot on Giannis and he turned into what he is. But you got to go back to Oscar Robertson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar you know, with the exception of the yeah. one year Ray Allen, Big Dog, and Cassell got into the Eastern Conference Finals. If that's the best thing you're rooting for, like, it's just difficult. Very much so. You're right. The Bucks have been nothing. I mean, I don't want to say they've been like the worst team ever, but before the Giannis, I mean, the Bucks were like, when I think of the Bucks, is like a bottom tier. Yeah. I mean, they're just a nothing team. I don't view them as like, oh, as shitty as like the Clippers used to be, but they were like a nothing team, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I, Milwaukee's not like, an awful city. It's a lot but, like, like, right? Like, I'm just joking around with somebody the other day, and they're like, well, it shouldn't matter. They want to go where they can win championships. I'm like, dude, if you are a young 25 year old millionaire, do you want to hang on South Beach, LA, New, you know, I'd say New York, but the, you know, Dolan messes that one up. But there's a million places. And if you like the Midwest and the cold weather, wouldn't you rather be in Chicago? Like, people don't flock to Milwaukee. Yeah, it's better than Green Bay, but so what's. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Cleveland. I, you know I love Cleveland as much as anyone. But if I were not from here, I would never move here. Um, and I even moved away for a while and didn't think I would ever move back. I mean, there's no chance if I were like an NBA player and I could basically get the same money in Miami or Phoenix that I would take it in Cleveland unless I were from here. Yeah, exactly. I haven't been to every single one of the cities that owns an NBA franchise. Uh, but I'm willing to bet uh, I would like most of them more than I would like Milwaukee or Cleveland. Yeah. 
<laughs> all right, guys, that's what we got for today. I got a little off subject at the end, but it's all in good, clean fun. Uh, go sign up for a membership at the website. Click the thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you guys uh, real shortly about some other stuff. Thanks, guys.